Good afternoon, guys. Welcome to the 57th edition of At Home Fitness with Coach A. Excuse me, a little Phil Collins bass drop there. Uh, sorry, coming at you a little late today. We had some lighting issues in the old garage gym, so we had to bring it inside. And as you guys can see, the famed closet of At Home Fitness with Coach A is now a Large closet. Mm hmm. Special. Special, special. Been watching a lot of HDTV. Thought we'd expand the square footage a little bit. All right. Without further ado, let's get to today's workout. We are going to be doing a deck of cards workout today. The suits and rep schemes are as follows Hearts will be deadlifts. Uh, this is programmed for a barbell deadlift, about 185, 125. If you guys need to want to modify it from there, feel free to do so. Also, feel free to stick around at the end of the video, in which case I will talk about all the modifications, different ways you can do these movements that are programmed. All right. Movement two is clubs. That is dumbbell plank rows. They can be a couple different ideas here with you guys. If you only have really light weights for this, then let's go same number of reps each arm. So if we're looking at a three, uh, we're looking at three reps there. In that case, let's go three right and three left. Doesn't really matter if you guys are alternating or doing all one, then they go into the other. Uh, if we have something a little bit heavier, thinking like maybe 50, 35 on a dumbbell, um, and then let's go with that number of reps. You can always make up the odd numbers in the end by starting odds with different arms, or you guys can always round up to the nearest even number. Movement number three is spades, and that will be handstand push-ups. Again, we'll talk about the modifications at the end. Whatever you would normally do for a handstand push-up is probably what you should do for this. Uh, this is programmed to be an overhead pressing movement. Uh, so if you can keep it that way, there won't be any uh, overuse over the next couple days. And finally, the fourth movement is diamonds, and that will always be 20 double unders or 40 singles or however you guys are modifying this. So with the reps, everything but the double unders, since those are always going to be 20 no matter which diamond pops up, follows this rep scheme. Two, two reps, three, three reps, four, four reps etc. Once you guys get to the face cards, Jack, Queen, King, Ace, those are all going to be 10. So technically, you will see 10 reps five times, 10, Jack, Queen, King, Ace of each movement. And finally, there she is, the Joker. Um, every deck has a Joker or two, probably, unless you took it out. Uh, the joker for my workout today is going to be an 800 meter run. I want that to be a longer, steadier cardio piece. Now, some stuff to keep in mind. The pacing of this is a pick a card up, do the work, put it down. Pick a card up, do the work, put it down. It's not necessarily a race, but it's not necessarily a pace, so to speak. Um, if you want to mess with that, by all means, go ahead and do so. Meaning if you want to try and race through this, that's fine. If you want to... Uh, give yourself a rest. Keep that card facing down until you're ready for it. Let it be a surprise. Uh, stick around for any modifications and changes in movement for your scalable equipment. All right, guys, we're talking modifications for the workout. Let's get a reminder of what we have, even though it was like 10 seconds ago. So deadlifts, double unders, handstand push-ups, and plank rows. All right, let's take these in order. So deadlifts, a uh, bunch of different ways you guys can do this. If we have dumbbells, we can hold one, tap between the feet. We can hold two on the handles, tap outside the feet. If... For some case, you have odd measurements to your 
hip, leg, arm lengths. And that puts you in a terrible deadlift position. Raise up the floor next to your feet or between your feet. Give yourself a little more space. Put something on the ground, basically, and make that range of motion shorter. Um, weight wise, what coach would equal about 185, 125? Well, with dumbbells, with the kettlebell, I mean, it's obvious. Right? We're trying to get to that number. Nobody's going to have 185 pound kettlebell. So, in which case, you're probably just going with the heaviest kettlebell you have. Um, two kettlebells or two dumbbells outside of the feet. Uh, usually the addition of those two weights minus 10 to 20% ends up being about a barbell. All right. So in this case, I want to try and get to something that's maybe like 80s, 70s, 75s, probably 70s, 75s for the guys, uh, about 50s for the ladies would equal that 185, 125 in terms of the stimulus. Um, but again, that's kind of based on the quality of performance with those weights. So play around with it. Um, this shouldn't necessarily be a massive weight that you guys have to break up, but it shouldn't necessarily be something you can sprint to without some, uh, fatigue wear down as well. Second movement, double unders, just like we've been doing. You can do single unders, double the reps. You can do jumping jacks. I would probably double the reps. You can do toe taps where you're kicking a plate or something in front of you, kind of hopping on your toes. Um, you can do lateral hop overs. You guys have a bar. If you have a barbell or you have dumbbells, you can always hop over those counting those bounces, so to speak for reps, however you want to do it, keep it the same, keep it uniform. So we're getting better at it. Thus it becomes a little more cardio and a little less skill, so to speak. Uh, third movement, handstand pushups, whatever you guys have modified with seated Z press, um, kneeling overhead press, strict press, standing, um, Handstand push up in a pike position, feet at the wall, pike position, feet up elevated on a box, bench, whatever. Let's keep it the same. If you only have one weight to press and then also to row, then we can always do a seated Z press, equaling out those reps. All right, just like we would equal out the reps on the plank rows. For the plank rows, two dumbbells, I can be on the ground alternating arms. Uh, if I only have a barbell, I can do a bent over row in this position. Uh, if I only have one dumbbell, I can hand on the ground, row, put it down, switch it up, row. If I only have one kettlebell, let's say, obviously that creates a super awkward position on the ground. I'm going to put my hand on a bench, probably be at a slight incline, do all my rows on that arm, and then switch arms. All right. If you guys only have bands, we can still deadlift with bands you can always loop one band under the foot put it over the traps for a good morning or you can take both pieces of the band loop them under the feet in which case you almost have like little handles sticking out to the size of your feet and use those for the deadlift uh, we can also use those for an overhead press with like a big circle looped under the feet pressing overhead uh, to simulate the handstand push-up you can always use those for a row if you want to get core and pulling in for that dumbbell plank row, but you can't get into the plank position, you can hit a side plank, attach that band to something, and row in the side plank. Enjoy.